Hey, good morning. It's Mike. 4.30. Hope you got your thinking caps on. And hopefully you got your coffee. We're uh, talking about uh, creating other types of families in the family editor and designing with the family editor. Now, uh, this is chapter 15. We, we just got into it. Uh, and there's a lot to it. There's, uh, there's actually a whole other interface that we'll be working with. And as you can see from the uh, rivet screen, I've got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. I've got a family open that I used, um, just a generic family as a template to open up. I inserted some things into it, and I have this other project opened up that uh, goes along with this lesson. So let me just read it verbatim, and you'll get a better idea what's going on. Creating other types of families in the family editor. Now that you understand the importance of selecting between a hosted and a non-hosted family template, you should become familiar with some other types of families you can create in the family editor. Placing line-based components. This is a less common type of family that allows you to place components in the project environment as lines. Line-based families can take advantage of line-based tools such as trim, extend, and split, and can also support parametric arrays. Generic model, detail item, and structural stiffener are the only family categories currently available to be used as a line-based component. As an example of one is a generic model created by Steve Stafford for his Revit op-ed blog. This family is used to lay out egress paths and then calculate the total tra travel distance in a schedule. You can download the family here. Revit op-ed blogspot.com 2007 01 egress path .html. You can find that uh, in the uh, book's companion website. Anyway, I have it open here as well as uh, uh, a generic family with uh, an ACIS DeSalt Systems uh, solid that I imported um, as a CAD uh, file. Now, that's the next paragraph. In the, uh, if I change this view to tab and zoom extents, you'll see we have this regular generic building with some, uh, some rooms, and we have these lines of uh, egress. So now, it doesn't really go into um, how you create these egress lines. Well, we can take a quick look at it. Um, if you look at the annotation symbols, you'll see in this template, Egress 2009, there are some great, great annotation families. Um, as you can see, uh, Egress Path Tag, Egress Segment Combo, um, Egress Path Tag. And if you go down to Generic Families, you'll see Path of Travel Start, Middle, End, Path of Travel Arc, middle arc, arc segment. Now, that's basically these lines that we're looking at right here, path of travel. So, and you can see, it has a, uh, it has a linear distance, it has a, a comment, exit corridor A. So if I was to emulate that, drag that in, well, you can see I could start somewhere, and I could give this a comment, I could say, uh, you see from available comments, exit corridor ABC. I can even type in uh, exit stage left, right, in the comments section. And when I draw in the path of egress, you'll see that's as far as I can go with the start. And then I can, oops, drag in the middle. Just drag in the families by hovering over, selecting it, and dragging it in. And you can basically continue along with this path of egress. So if I was to just draw in a series of lines here. Now if I was to go to end, drag that in, well, we'll get an arrowhead at the end. Now I'm just going to hit escape. And if I grab that, you'll see that's the path of tra travel. It doesn't really give us much help, but with the annotation symbols, if I go to uh, annotate egress path tag, right? If I, uh, if I go to 
tag this last question mark, question mark, question mark. Ah, exit stage left. Um, leader, no leader. If I was to do that again, this will do it without a leader. Let me delete this one. And we uh, just tagged it. Now, if I was to uh, egress segment tag, and I was to drag that in, well, that'll give me the footage of each segment. Now, this is a line-based component, which means uh, you can parametrically array things on here, right? Uh, if I was to install, let's see if I have it in, in this, uh, if this family's loaded. Let's see if this thing is loaded. I just got a phone call at 4 30 in the morning. Uh, in any event, let's just uh, do a quick example here. Let's see if we can uh, give this a quick array. So if I was to grab this, you could see an array creates a linear or radial array of selected elements. Use the array tool to create several instances of one or more elements and manipulate them simultaneously. You could specify the distance between the elements in the array. So if I was to say, okay, number, and I was to say 25, and um, move to second, constrain, it's going to say, Click to enter move start point. Uh, and then if I just give it a distance, six foot six, you'll see that all of them, all 25, have been arrayed. But they didn't follow the path. They didn't follow the path. It's just a regular array. And by clicking that array, if I tab it, well, let me undo that for a second. Let me grab this again, array, radial, linear, constrain. If I was to give this 25, As you can see, you can start to array items on these travel lines. In any event, I'm not going to get into that. Then we go into that in later chapters. Let me just undo that. But the path of travel is actually a very good tool. If we look at this in, um, in 3D, you'll see it's more to it than that. These are the path of travel, the egress lines. And you see there's a little human being to give you a more sense of scale. All right, so um, that's pretty much uh, it on the uh, line-based families. And um, line-based families can take advantage of line-based tools, such as trim extents and split, and can also support parametric arrays. All right, so generic model detail item and structural stiffener are the only family categories currently available to be used as a line-based component. Now, uh, one of them are detail components. Using detail components, some types of families consist of only 2D elements. These are called detail components. They are most often used in drafting views. However, detail components can also be placed in plane, elevation, and section views. Now, a drafting um, view, if we, uh, if you remember, you don't see it in the family. Uh, you don't see it in the template uh, because a uh, drafting view hasn't been created. But if you went to view, uh, and you've seen them, the start page on all these exercises is a drafting view. You can create a, a drafting view, and then you give it a scale, right? Say uh, 96. Then you have a drafting view. And this is where you, you may keep a lot of your 2D uh, 
your 2D drafting views. But these detail components not, not only are available um, in the drafting view, they can also be uh, placed in plane elevation section views. The benefit of using detail components as compared to individual lines and filled regions, filled regions is that a detail component can be reused many times, thus increasing drafting productivity. Quality is increased by allowing control of repetitive detail elements and they support keynote and tagging abilities. We discuss detail components further in chapter 17, detailing your design. So we're gonna to get to it. WT, let me, uh, WTZA, zoom all these viewports. I guess I can close this path of egress file. Uh, close this drafting view. WTZA. All right. So, placing annotation symbols. Much like detail components, annotation symbols are families that contain only 2D graphics, including lines, text, and fill or masking regions. They are different from detail components because annotation symbols react to the scale of the view in which they are placed. Aside from the common uses of annotation symbols such as tags, north arrows, or graphic scales, you can nest annotation symbols and other types of model families to customize and better manage your approach to project documentation. Consider some of the families for electrical terminal fixtures in the default library. These families include a 3D representation of a small element, such as a receptacle plate, that will be seen in an elevation view, but they also include a generic annotation to represent the object with a scaled symbol in a plan view, as shown in figure 15.6. In chapter four, configuring templates and standards, we showed you how to build a custom uh, annotation symbol for use in your own projects. Well, um, if I was to just go and see if there was one in here, but I doubt it, and we'll have a project open, this is just, um, just the uh, uh, the new family that we're creating. But if I was to open uh, an RFA, if I was to go into C, Program Data, Autodesk, Revit 2020, Libraries, U.S. Imperial, let's just go here to Electrical Annotations. Well, if we went down to a, uh, as you can see, there's a bunch. Let me see where the one is that I want. These are annotation symbols for, um, for electrical devices. As you see, they're all annotation symbols. So let's bring in, let's bring in a family, electrical family, Oops. As you can see, there's a bunch here. Let me get the one I want. And again, I'm not 100% sure how th these are made in, um, in this particular family, but if I can get the one I want, we should be all right. Hold on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. see something. Hold on. Let's do it this way. Let me open a new um, file. New. There's a long way to go for this one little exercise. New project, electrical. Uh, I'll, I'll browse for the default electrical template. Electrical Default, RTE. Let's bring that open. Let's open that up. The family should be loaded in here. All right, so let me go to the power plane of this. And let me, uh, just, we're in the power plane right here. And if I was to go to Systems, and I was to go to Device, we can see electrical fixture, such as receptacles, junction boxes, and other power devices. Well, standard duplex receptacle, and then there's a GFCI. 
But again, it's a wall hosted. So I would need to put in a wall first, right? So we have our wall, systems, device, GFI. Now, if we look at this uh, from an elevation standpoint, and put this on course, uh, hold on, well, there it is. In, in elevation and in 3D, you'll see that this, uh, this GFCI is represented differently in, based on its view. So, again, in the, in the power plan, it's represented by a symbol that can be, um, that's going to be based on the scale of the sheet of, of, the, of this particular view when you place it on a sheet. And you can see there's a, there's a tag associated with it. So these failings include a 3D representation of a small element, such as a receptacle plate, that will be seen in an elevation view, but they also include a generic annotation to, be, to represent the object with a scaled symbol in a plan view. So if I was to uh, edit this film and take a look at it, well, you can see it's, uh, it's wall hosted and you have to actually take a real quick peek at it to get an idea of how it's made up, what it's made up of. It has its own duplex annotation. Um, any of that, um, that's basically um, a, a family using a, uh, a symbol to represent uh, the object in plan view. So let me just uh, close that and uh, just make a note of that because we're going to be getting into creating uh, all these down the road. All right, now mass families. Now this is a this is something um, this may may or may not uh, apply to your discipline, but creating mass families. Mass families are special components that are created in a slightly different environment of the family as are called called the conceptual design environment. Within this environment, you use tools to sketch lines that are used to generate forms almost automatically, as shown in figure 15.7, the line tools in the ribbon of the CDE, conceptual design environment, allow you to sketch first, select, select lines, and use the create form button. After form has been created, it can be subdivided for additional articulation. So basically what that's saying is that within the family editor, Within the family editor, now we only have this one family that I created from a generic model. Don't ask what this thing is yet. So within the family editor, on the reference level, if I was just to create, just create model lines, I can get into concept, conceptual uh, design environment by creating a shape. And then selecting that shape. Right. All right, so let me just, uh, basically it's just like we did with the, uh, with the mass in place tool, with the mass in place tool from, from basic geometry we could uh, create models within um, the family itself. So, hey then, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna get to the conceptual design environment once we start uh, getting more into the family editor and different ways um, at which we could do this. So, Let's just hold that thought because um, we're going to talk a much, much more about uh, the geometry tools in the conceptual design environment. All right, so that being said, using mass families with an application. Now, 
this is talking about another application called Rhino. Um, and we'll discuss it real quick, but I'm not going to dwell on it. We discuss using mass families with greater detail in Chapter 9, Advanced Modeling and Massing. If you have an Apple iPad or Android tablet, you might also want to experiment with the free Autodesk Format mobile application. It is also available as a web application at uh, http format360.autodesk.com. With this design application, you can quickly generate and study forms, including the ability to analyze gross floor area and shadows when the app synchronizes with your Autodesk 360 Cloud account. It will automatically convert the designs to RF, RVT project files, where the model geometry is represented as an in-place masses. Now finally, a special type of family um, that is used, hold on, let me still check. Yeah. Um, finally, a special type of diameter family that is used in the um, conceptual design environment is known as the adaptive component. These families are an adaptation of the pattern-based curtain panel concept, but you can use them in geometry other than divided services. You can learn more about creating and using adaptive components in Chapter 13, Creating Walls and Curtain Walls, and Chapter 10, Conceptual Design. Uh, we did that with the panels uh, that we created that we used as patterns on top of uh, curtain walls. Now, understanding the family editor. The family editor is not a different software application that you need to install. It is simply a unique mode within Revit that has tools and commands specifically designed to create component content. After you launch the command to make a new family and choose a family template, you will enter the family editor. If you happen to have a project file open, you can switch back and forth between a family file and the project just the same way you would toggle between the open views of a project, and we've demonstrated that a few times. Depending on the type of family you are building, the Create tab and the Ribbon will have slightly different tools. In this chapter, you'll be using the Furniture Family template, and the Create tab will have specific 3D modeling tools. And we're going to go into those. If you are creating a detail component or annotation family, neither of which can contain 3D geometry, the Create tab displays only 2D lines, uh, 2D tools such as line, fill, region, and label. And we're going to get into that in a minute. Uh, I just want to get through this, uh, uh, this uh, Desalt Systems ASUS SAT solid um, because it slows us up. Okay, so now we also have, within the Family Editor, have the ability to include imported CAD data. From the Insert tab in the ribbon, you can, so you can use the Import CAD tool to use 2D or 3D information from another source. You cannot use link, the Link CAD tool in the Family Editor. Therefore, any data imported to a family will not update in the original CAD file if the original CAD file is changed. A feature in Revit is the ability to explode and then manipulate imported 3D CAD geometry. And it works with DWG in Revit 2020. You can experiment with this feature by downloading the import CAD.SAT from the book's webpage, which is what is imported in this model. You can see it right here. Um. Okay, let's get away from this. All right, so uh, switch to the insert tab, import CAD, find the file, and that was in um, D, Revenue Structural Files. Family Editor, Import SAT. But it doesn't give you a, a radio button that you need. So basically, it goes on to say, browse the location where you download the sample SAT file. You have to change the files of type drop-down list to ASUS, which is this, ASUS SAT files, which is another program. This can read another program file extension. After the model is loaded, go to the default 3D view and press the ZF zoom to fit command. Select the imported geometry and from the contextual tab in the ribbon, choose explode, full explode, select the solid geometry again. And you will notice that the imported model is now ready to be manipulated with a series of grip controls. Delete the imported geometry before continuing with the exercise in this chapter. Okay, well that, um, unfortunately you can't, in 2020 I don't see the ability to explode uh, these into their own, uh, geometric primitives, or nearly this would open up here. But one thing you can do is you can draw on it. 
um, and you could, um, it could the face it's a, it's it has faces, so you could host face based components on it, um, and you could obviously set your reference plane to any portion of the imported uh, generic model. So, I mean, if I was to put a conduit connector on it, again, you could see. It's, uh, it's available to be placed on the face. So, I don't want to get too far off on that because it doesn't get into it too much, but there are a lot of instances where you're, doing, you're bringing in 3D geometry from other platforms and then having to make it become a smart RevPro object. And they write lots of code to make that happen. Okay, another tab in that family editor that, that might seem familiar is the Annotate tab. Here you, here you will find tools uh, for dimensions, symbolic lines, and text. In a model component, dimensions and text placed in the family editor are not visible when the family is loaded and placed in a project. Although text can be used for reference notes in the family editor, dimensions are used to control and drive the geometry. You will learn much more about parametric dimensions later in this chapter. The tools and the detail panel of the annotate tab in the ribbon allow you to create some 2D geometry within a 3D family. This is especially useful if you have a somewhat complex model that you would like to display as a simplified graphic in a plan view. For example, you may, may have a detailed 3D view of a bathroom, water closet, toilet fixture. If such a model was composed of complex curved surfaces and solids, displaying many of these components in a project view might ultimately begin to degrade visual performance. Instead, the 3D geometry can be assigned to not display in a plan view, while you include a simple sketch of the fixture in the plan view of the family, just like the uh, receptacle. Your renderings, sections, and elevations will display the 3D geom family geometry, while your floor plan views will remain simple and fast. One final aspect to understand about the family editor is its ability to use multiple views to visualize your design. Similar to the project environment, it lets you create as many views as you need to help visualize the content in your family. The reference level plan view can be duplicated, right? Reference level can be duplicated. If you need to examine your family at different elevations. And um, if I look at the reference level, you can uh, duplicate any level, right? Right, and if this spans more than one level, then obviously, anyway, you get the idea. All right, so um, again, I just want to just show you what happens when you open a generic model again, because we may have, now remember, when you go to open a model, there's models, which are RVTs, and then there's families, which are RFAs. So let's go to new. Again, you have to select the template first. So generic model adaptive, generic model, two level based, and there'd be an instance where you'd have to add another reference level. And there's generic model pattern based, like we used for the, uh, um, the curtain wall. And there is a regular generic model. Um, and again, line based components can be used with this generic model. So remember, when it opens up, you're originally going to get three or four views are going to open up in tabs. And when you view uh, tile ZA, you'll see your reference level, your view one, which is the 3D view, your front, and your left, right? So if you think about this, reference level is like a plan view. It's like a plan view, but for a two-level uh, family, you may need another reference level to constrain the top, right? All right, so um, then, then it goes to say that the reference level plan view can be duplicated if you need to examine your family at different elevations. Simply change the view range properties of each plan view to control the height of the view's cut plane from the view tab in the ribbon. You can also create camera views and sections within the family. So, yeah, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't change, duplicate this, and then just change the cut plane uh, on different levels. And this is obviously associated level uh, 
reference level, right? Associated level, reference level. Well, if I created another level, you would have that option to pick, right? If I was to cancel out of here, duplicate view, duplicate, reference level, copy one, rename it to reference level uh, two. And then when I go into its visibility settings and go to its view range, you'll see associate level, reference level, associate level, reference level. You could now go and say, okay, well, um, I want this view to have a cut plane of say 18 inches and hit apply. So it'll be independent of this one. If I go to the view range here, four feet, cut plane, right? Number two is four feet. And then over here, 18 inches. Um, but it doesn't create a, uh, it doesn't create a paralleled reference level, uh, ceiling plane, um, like it would in a project. All right, so developing the framework for a family component. All right, so it's gonna actually start getting into uh, a tutorial and we're going to be moving forward with one tutorial after the other so let's just digest all that that's a lot of reading not a lot of uh, demo but um, I want to cut this one here at um, 31 minutes uh, have some coffee wake up a little bit because we got a lot to do developing the framework for a family component we got to get into detailing and schedules and annotating parameters and modeling for construction and presenting and um, using energy analysis, lighting analysis, and then more designing with the family editor and tips and tricks. So we're going to get there. Hopefully you can do it in one, uh, one long session as we've been able to do. But time is running out. Time is running out. But, um, I think if you can get through the fundamentals of this book, the fundamentals of this book, um, and this is the industry that you've chose to be in, then you're going to uh, be that much better for it. Mastering Autodesk Revit 2018. <clears throat> Excuse me. Master it to the best of your ability. Master it. In any event, I'll pick this up on the other end.